Hey everybody, this is Steve Dunlap with Instructional Services. I uh, just want to take a little bit of time to show you this video and talk to you about a few documents you can use as you're doing some benchmark planning uh, for grades 2 through 6. All these documents are available on the K6 Math website and I'll show you here in just a minute where you can access those. Okay, so there are a few documents you're going to want to use uh, when you're doing this benchmark planning, uh, and those can be accessed through the K6 Math website. Let me show you how to get there in case you're not aware. Uh, from the district homepage, if you go to Departments and click on Departments and then click on Instructional Services, you're going to get a whole list of uh, different departments within our department, uh, different web pages within our department you can look at. You're going to want to go to K6 Mathematics and then click on the new K6 Math website. Now here you're going to see uh, a new site that has been developed and all the documents you're looking for are under planning and pacing. So we're going to be looking at pacing guides, blueprint correlation guides, topic lists, and some planning forms. So uh, if you would like to uh, access any of those, if you don't have them already, that's where you can find them. Another thing on here that you may want to take a look at are some of the videos we have. And then also if you're 5th or 6th grade, we have 5th uh, and 6th grade uh, videos that we put out each week uh, just to help do some planning with you. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these documents. And the first one we want to look at obviously is your pacing guide. Uh, this is obviously a, a very important tool to have when you're doing your planning. Uh, it gives you an idea of where you're starting and ending in a benchmark window. And keep in mind that these documents are, are flexible and, and are meant to be uh, used so that you can move things around. And as we talk about this process a little bit, you'll see how you can maybe uh, move things around. But you want to keep an idea of where you're starting and ending in a different, in a separate, in, a, in each benchmark window. So here's another document you're going to want to pay attention to, and this is the uh, topic list that uh, has been created for each grade level. And again, this is actually available for grades K through 6, and it's just a document that shows every lesson and every topic all in one spot. Unfortunately, Envision doesn't have a document like this, uh, so uh, the department went ahead and created one so that you have that in front of you. Now I'm going to be showing the documents for 6th grade in this video, but remember that uh, all of these are available for grades 2 through 6 and some of them, like the topic list and the pacing guide, are obviously available also for uh, uh, K and 1. So let's take a look at the, at the uh, blueprint correlation guide. If you haven't seen this before, this is a document that is, becomes very useful and helpful when you're doing benchmark planning and really topic planning and any planning at all. Uh, if you're doing a year-long plan or if you want to just see where you're going in a certain uh, amount of time, this can help you uh, immensely. And what this basically has is it's set up to show you the different standards in your grade level. Then it will show you the number of items that that uh, standard has on the CST. It then shows you uh, the Envision lessons where that standard is taught. It shows you uh, in which benchmark windows those standards show up. And then the final column over here are the CST release questions that correlate to that standard. So for example here, if we're looking at number sense 1.1, we know there are three questions on the CST for number sense 1.1. Here are the Envision lessons where you'll find number sense 1.1. This shows up in benchmark windows 1 and 2, and if you wanted to see what the CST level rigor is for that standard or how those, uh, that standard might be addressed on the CST, you can look at release questions 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so when we're looking at this document, and again, we're just going to look at 6th grade for, uh, as an example, but this can be done for grades 2 through 6, and we're going to look at the benchmark 4 window because that's what's coming up. Uh, here's how uh, I've used it with teams in the past and other teams have used it. Um, this document, again, is, can be helpful in lots of different ways. I'm just going to show you one of them right now. So what I like to do with the team first is to go ahead and go through, and let's say we're looking at benchmark window 4. We want to find out uh, where uh, the weight of the CST shows up in benchmark window 4. So again, benchmark 104 starts with topic 16, so that's what we're going to do first. We're going to go ahead and scroll through here and see where we see topic 16 show up. And again, it's nice to have the color because it's going to show up in that kind of pinkish purple color. And you can see right here that topic 16 shows up in algebra and functions 3.1. So that tells me that there's going to be one question on the CST for that standard. It shows up in uh, topic 16. So I want to go ahead and count topic 16 of at least having a weight of one question on the CST for that topic. I can keep going through here. I see that uh, measurement geometry 1.1 has three questions on the CST and it shows up in topic 16 as well. Um, so now I'm up to four questions on the CST for topic 16. 
Now this one right here you see measurement and geometry 1.2 and it shows uh, kind of like a, f a fraction if you will uh, here for the number of items and what this is really saying is that this standard will be uh, addressed on the CST once every two years. You're also going to see some that will say that a certain standard will be addressed once every three years. Uh, that You can kind of determine how you want to use that uh, information. You could give that a full weight of one question or um, you could give it a weight of zero. It just depends on how you and your team want to approach that. So again, we're up to, uh, let's say we're up to, we'll give this a weight of one. Uh, we know it's an important standard. So let's say we're up to a weight of five questions uh, for topic 16. We keep going through here. I see a lot of pink and purple, but nothing for topic 16. I keep going through. I don't see anything, and that comes to the end of my content standards. Now you are going to see the mathematical reasoning standards in which they indicate that those standards are embedded, meaning that they... Um, the students are obviously using these mathematical reasoning skills um, and they're using them in all sorts of different uh, problems they uh, approach. For example, mathematical reasoning 2.1, use estimation to verify the reasonableness of calculated results. So, well, students are going to use that in all sorts of different problems. Uh, so again, they put this as embedded because you, it's hard to quantify uh, you know, how many times a question like that is going to show up on the CST because we would assume that students are doing that in a majority of their uh, uh, problems that they're solving on the CST or on any other test. So we're just paying attention right now to the content standards uh, and not necessarily looking, at least in this uh, portion, at the mathematical reasoning standards. So we came up with a, a number of five questions on the CST for topic 16. What I would do is to go ahead and write that number down. You can write that on uh, your topic list right next to that topic. You could also do it by using uh, something like, oh, let's see if we can pull it up here. Uh, a window planning guide like this, uh, you could put in topic 16 right here and then write that there are five questions on the CST for topic uh, 16. This is a really good template you can use and again this is on the K6 Math website. I like to use this by putting obviously the topic I'm starting with which is 16 and I'm ending with 20. Here it asks for the benchmark date. I like to actually put the window of time I'm working with so I would start with what's the first day I'm starting to teach uh, topic 16 and then what day am I giving the benchmark uh, for that that period of time so I can kinda see uh, what time limit I'm working with and then that gives me an idea of how I might be able to adjust things a bit. Uh, this is also a nice place you can obviously put the topic here, the big idea, and then make notes about that topic here of how you're going to structure that. If it's going to be something that you're going to spend maybe two days on a certain lesson, if there are two lessons you want to compact together, uh, those are notes you want to make there. And I can't stress imp how important it is to do this as a team. Um, obviously, you could do this as an individual, but working as a team, you're going to get a lot more information and insight with your teammates of how uh, it might be possible to structure uh, a certain benchmark window and, and how to approach uh, different topics and different lessons. So let's go back to the correlation guide real quick. Um, so we've gone through and we looked at topic 16. I would do the same thing for topics 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then I, what I would do is I would take and look at how much weight each one of those uh, topics has. So if, let's say that one of the topics has seven questions on the CST and another topic only has one question. Now that doesn't mean that one of those topics is less important than another, but it does tell me that I might want to spend more time on the topic that has more uh, items on the CST. And a lot of times what you'll see, and this happens in Envision as it does in any other uh, piece of curriculum, that there are going to be lessons in, let's say, for example, this is sixth grade, there are going to be lessons in here that are review from fifth grade. Uh, there are also going to be lessons in here that may prepare students for something they're going to see in seventh grade. So some lessons you will find don't necessarily address a specific grade level standard. And so you want to think about and, and make careful considerations about how you approach that lesson. Now, I wouldn't advise that you skip any of those lessons, but you may be able to take that lesson, combine it with another lesson, and compact those together to buy you a little bit more time to spend extra time on a lesson that you know is a very uh, hard standard for students to master, and you want to give your students extra time with that. Again, that's going to be something that you're going to involve lots of different information points. You're going to obviously look at the... Um, 
blueprint correlation guide, you're going to look at data that you have from your students this year, you're going to look at data you have from your students last year just to see what topics did your students in the past struggle with that will give you an indication of what your students now may struggle with also. Of course they're different cohorts of students, but at least it gives you an idea of where um, the really difficult material in, in a certain grade level is. And another thing you're going to use obviously is your professional judgment. You know the students in your classroom better than, than I do or even than the person next door to you does. So you're going to have to make some determinations based on the students in your classroom and think about um, where they are having a difficult time, where are they struggling, are there gaps that need to be filled in in order for them to be successful and master certain standards in your grade level. So again, lots of different points of data that you're using, lots of points of information in order to make this determination. But then once you have a structure or an idea of where the weight is for certain topics, it can then give you an idea of how you might want to adjust your pacing a little bit. And then you can go back to your pacing guide and say, okay, if I have from, let's for example here, if we're looking at the benchmark four window for sixth grade, I have from March 19th until May 14th to teach these topics. Um, how do I want to structure that? Am I going to use um, a, a two, two days to cover one lesson because I know it's a really difficult concept and it's very heavily weighted on the CST and I know my students are going to have a hard time with it? And then are there going to be some lessons that you may combine together because one lesson might be a review of fifth grade and then the next lesson is a sixth grade standard you may want to put those together. Again, that is something that you as a team need to come together and decide and figure out how you're going to do that using all those different pieces of information that I talked about before. So hopefully this was a little bit helpful for you, showed you some documents you can use, I uh, talked about a process you can go through, and again this is going to look different in each uh, different situation with different teams, but this is kind of just of a guideline that you can use. If you have any questions or concerns or you just need some help working through these documents or understanding this a little bit more, don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email more than happy to talk to you over the phone or chat with you uh, over email and, and talk about this process to kind of clear it up for you. But hopefully this has been helpful and I thank you for your time.